preaches. I've already enjoyed this fine devotional with you. One or two songs maybe you didn't know and maybe we didn't know, but I think it's a good idea sometimes to introduce songs to all of us that we don't normally use. Surely I would be way afield if I didn't say thank you to the ladies who fixed such fine food provided by the brethren at these inflated prices. We appreciate that very much. Now I will say this, brethren, at the outset of the program, I've been directing the Freed Hardin College course for 27 years. This is the first program I believe I've ever given in Little Rock. I've given programs in the state of Arkansas, but I think this is the first one in the city of Little Rock, and I really wonder, Gary, how that happened. I didn't plan it that way, it just somehow happened. Arkansas is my home state. I was born up in Lawrence County, a little town by the name of Strawberry, and if you don't know where that is, you need to find out, because that's a fine little town. You may not know where it is, and they may not know where Little Rock is, but that's all right. We'll have a fine evening together, hopefully. We should like to open our program with Come and Taste, arranged by a lovely lady by the name of Alice Parker, who teaches composition at, at Westminster uh, Choir College at Princeton, New Jersey. Come and taste. I suppose, brethren, are night people, and I must confess that I am. I don't ever like music programs in the morning, and I most commonly don't like to get up early in the morning. I operate better from 12 noon to 12 midnight than I do from 6 to 6. That completely destroys the idea, of course, of early to bed and early to rise. Makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, I suspect, brethren but I'm not much of either. And so maybe that is the wrong way to go about it, but I still am a night person. But the song is about a, a morning person. Good morning, Brother Pilgrim. This pilgrim is bound for Canaan's land, and that would make even the morning, I suppose, seem very nice. Good morning, Brother Pilgrim. Thank you. 
Musicologists have said that since Bach we have done nothing but go downhill musically. That may be a very true statement because there's no doubt about it, J.S. Bach was the great pivotal point in music. We talk about post Bach and pre Bach. I sometimes say, brethren, that there's two people that I really wish people wouldn't talk about around me, and that's J.S. Bach and Alexander Campbell. You know, back when I was on the farm, they used to call some of us Church of Christ people Campbellites. I don't think they really knew what they were calling us. I don't think the people that called us that could read a single paragraph of Campbell's intelligently if they had a dictionary open in front of them. Do you follow me? I don't want to be called a Campbellite, but if I was picking up a scholarly man to be called, I suspect I'd pick Alexander Campbell and Martin Luther. They were both, shall we say, brethren, intelligent. But we don't want to put anybody in the place of Christ, you see, and that's the reason we objected to that term. But J.S. Bach wrote, Beloved Jesus. <coughs> Oh, my God. 
The next song is whatever God ordains is good. There's a number of things, brethren, any number of them that we don't understand about this old world. But what God ordains is good. Man doesn't always ordain good, but God does. of my God, I ask. song that we sing is a composition of a very lovely man that we had on our campus last year well in fact earlier this year I should say earlier this school year earlier in the semester William L. Dawson wrote about five or six of the next group of pieces that we will do 
It was a privilege to get to know him. I didn't find out how old Dawson was. He said he didn't tell his age, and I wasn't rude enough to ask, but someone did ask, and Mr. Dawson simply told him that he didn't tell his age. I tell my age, and it doesn't bother me, but I'm sure Mr. Dawson is older because his career started in 1920, and my career started in 1950. So there must be some difference in our ages. But Mr. Dawson is an inspiring fellow and a fine, fine composer and conductor. And we should like to sing his very beautiful, Mary had a baby, oh yes, Mary had a baby. <clears throat> sing a lot of songs, I think, that encourage us and the blacks of our country have said it very well on any number of occasions. In this next song by Mr. Dawson again, I got a crown up into the kingdom, ain't of that good news. Surely we need to think about the great place of heaven. Up in the kingdom, I got a crown up into the kingdom. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
song that we sing was written by Jester Harrison, another one of our great black composers in this country. Jester played the part on That's My Mama, a wildcat. Played a little bit of foolishness on that particular program. But while you were watching Jester Harrison carry on on TV, you were looking at a fella that will leave us when he passes from this world. Some great works of art that have inspired millions of people. He has done the background on such movies as Foxes of Hera and so on. Many, many fine pieces of music from his pen. And this one, I want Jesus to walk with me. <laughs> say, brethren, in the sense of the technical word apology, and that word is used to justify technically, brethren, rather than to apologize for. But the reasons that we're doing so much, Dawson, we had him on our campus, had the Christian College Choral Festival up there, had Freed Hartman College this year, had about 600 singers and about 13 core groups from Pennsylvania to Los Angeles. My, my, what a fine evening we had. 
and we have since just built these pieces into our program. We had to learn them anyway, so we figured we might as well get some mileage out of them and do them in our program. The next one is sooner we'll be done with the trouble of the world, going home to live with God. next song, brethren, is In His Kill. Now that simply means in the care of the Lord. It's a folkish expression, in the care of his Lord, of our Lord. And I wrote Mr. Dawson a letter after he'd been with us, and I put at the end of it, In His Kill. And he knew what that phrase meant. There is a hole at the end of this song. And I thought that was rather strange when I ran into that. It's at the place that an amen would be, a hole right at the end of the song. 
Well, Mr. Dawson explained that to us. He says that whole means approval of the preceding, which has already been stated. And so you see, really, brethren, it is an amen. That's what it means. In his kale, Daniel, he was a good man, prayed three times a day, and the angels heist their windows just to hear what Daniel had to say. A lot of my Arkansas brethren over here know that word heist. It means to raise it up, if you please. But a lot of the young people in the chorus, when we came across that, said the angels hissed their windows. Well, that's not just exactly what it means, but that's what it looks like when it's spelled. And so there are two or three beautiful arguments in the song for us being in his kale. One day as I was a-walking, walking down the road, well, the Spirit spoke unto me, and it filled my heart with joy, joy, joy. One day as I was a-walking, walking down the road, thinking, I'm a dead man. tell there is a lot of fury in this section of the program and it's not nearly all over yet the time is probably within 15 minutes of being through but it's kind of like landing a jet airplane it doesn't take long to do it but I would imagine you'd need to be on your toes you know the next one we sing is quite different there is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul Frank Scar will do the tenor solo. There's a bomb in Gilead. There is 
there's a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Frank Scar will do the tenor solo. There's a balm in Gilead. Mm -hmm. My wife and I were riding with Mr. Dawson from Memphis home. Dark, cold 
cold night. It's cold, you know what those winter nights were. The thing I liked about Mr. Dawson, he had a little wool cap with a little ball on top of it. And I've got a flop-eared cap. You know what that is, brethren, that comes down around your ears and buckles. And I didn't get a picture of us in those caps. I think that would have been, shall we say, a style set if we had have gotten that. But in talking to Mr. Dawson that evening, he said, what does Zion's wall mean to you? Well, I said, Mr. Dawson, uh, in the Old Testament, they built the walls around Jerusalem. And I talked about that a little bit. Well, he agreed with that. But he said, God's going to build up Zion's wall. And he said, every other wall's been torn down. But not Zion's wall. It's going to stay. And that's the context, I think, of the next piece. God's going to build up Zion's wall.
that. I should like to close the program with the exception of the Lord bless you and keep you at the end with a beautiful Baroque piece by George Frederick Handel. Hallelujah. Amen. O Judah, rejoice. From Judas Maccabeus. service and the program both from the time we started. Here's what happens for the rest of the evening. It isn't nearly all over yet. In fact, the main part may be yet to come. We don't want you to forget us if we're supposed to stay all night with you. Uh, you be sure and come by and get us. Uh, we have chorus members, Ken folk here with us this evening. And we're very happy to have them with us. Rena's folks are with us from Clarksville. That's right, isn't it? Clarksville. And uh, Debbie Goebel's, I believe, aunt and uncle are here from the Little Rock area. Are there other people here that are kinsfolk to the court? Well, we're surely glad to have all of you with us. And we appreciate the fact that Rena's folks have driven about 100 miles for this program this evening. Of course, they may have been interested in seeing their daughter too, who knows, but we appreciate the fact that they're here. In just a moment, I'll turn the program back to Gary. We want to sing the Lord bless you and keep you, which has been our custom for these 27 years, but we don't ever want it to be just a custom. We should like to sing the Lord bless you and keep you with sevenfold amen and to announce our program at Central Arkansas Christian. Did I get that right? And that's in Jacksonville, is it? Yes. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I believe. And if my time isn't right on that, you can call Brother Dials up there. But I believe I'm right about that. At 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then we go to Sulphur Springs tomorrow night, Texas. 
with a very dear friend and colleague of mine, Charles Williams, who taught for a number of years in our English department at Freed Hardeman College, and then on to the Dallas area, Garland, Texas, where Brother Hardeman Nichols preaches, and then on to uh, uh, Granbury, Texas, uh, where the McClishes live, and the McClishes sang with me, and their daughter is singing with us this evening. We should like to close our program with the Lord bless you and keep you and maybe say just this, brethren, if any of you would like to have a part in giving any money to the support of travel for the core group, you can either give that to me or to Brother Hampton, and we would appreciate that. If you came uh, and can do that or prepared to do that, we would appreciate it. If not, of course, we certainly do understand that. But if you would like to help us in these expenses, and they are indeed expenses. You know when you take anybody in a cafe or start down the road nowadays, you've got expenses. But we should like to say, the Lord bless you and keep you. Mm -hmm.